This is All India Radio. The news read by Valsa Williams. In West Bengal, two persons were killed in a bomb attack and lynching at Jamuria in Asansol subdivision of Bardwan district during the second phase of Panchayat elections today. Quoting official sources, our correspondent Orijit Chakraborty reports that the bomb attack victim was a CPIM supporter while another deceased was a ruling Trinamool Congress activist. The Trinamool Congress worker was beaten to death when he went to the spot to see the incident of bomb attack on the CPIM activist. Meanwhile, voting is on at East Midnapur, Hooghly and Burdwan districts, barring a few stray incidents. Around 13% polling was recorded in the first two hours of voting in the three districts. The Supreme Court today refused to entertain a PIL challenging appointment of Shashikant Sharma as the Comptroller and Auditor General of India, CAG. A bench headed by Chief Justice Altamas Kabir asked the petitioners, including former Chief Election Commissioner N. Gopalaswamy and former Chief of Naval Staff Admiral retired R. H. Tahiliani, to approach the High Court, which it said equally equipped to deal with the matter. The petition sought setting aside of Sharma's appointment, contending that it was made arbitrarily and without any system for selection, without any selection committee, any criteria, any evaluation, and without any transparency. There is no let-up in the flood situation in Uttar Pradesh. 4.96 lakh people spread over 10 districts in the Tarai region are still reeling under the floods. River Khagra is still flowing above the danger mark in Gonda, Baharaj and Ayodhya. The Central Water Commission says the Ganga continues to rise in Kannauj, Kanpur, Rai Bareli, Allahabad and Mirzapur, whereas the Yamuna is rising in Saharanpur, Itawa, Oreya, Hamirpur, Banda and Allahabad. Major rivers of the Tarai region are flowing above the danger mark and have inundated more than 500 villages. Indian CEO Forum, comprising Indian business leaders and professionals based in Sri Lanka, was officially launched by Economic Development Minister Basil Rajapaksha in Colombo last week. Speaking at the launching ceremony, Indian High Commissioner YK Sinha said the forum will help boost trade ties between Sri Lanka and India. In Bangladesh, a day-long countrywide hartal has been called today by Jamaat e Islami demanding the release of its former chief Ghulam Azam, protesting against the alleged governmental efforts to eliminate the Jamaat through wartime trials and sentences. The International Crime Tribunal, which has been hearing the case of Ghulam Azam for the last three months, announced yesterday that the verdict would be given today. In Egypt, the Islamist alliance led by Muslim Brotherhood has given a call for massive protests across the country today seeking the release and reinstatement of deposed President Morsi. The Brotherhood spokesman Tariq al-Morsi said that pro-Morsi supporters will march to the Republican Guard headquarters. The opposition revolutionary youth movement have also called for protests at Cairo's Tehrir Square and at the Ittahadia Presidential Palace to protect the gains of the 23rd January Revolution. The United Nations Assistance Mission in Afghanistan, UNAMA, has welcomed the Afghan parliament's approval to the new election law. In a press release issued in Kabul yesterday, UNAMA has described it as a key step towards establishing a robust electoral architecture for the 2014 presidential polls. It has also called for the rapid presidential endorsement, enactment and implementation of the law, specifically the appointment of the senior officials of the Election Commission. Nine Indian junior pugilists have punched their way into the finals of their respective categories in the Golden Glove of Vojvodina, an international boxing tournament in Kikinda, Serbia. And with that, we end this news bulletin.